In this video, uh, I'm going to go over setting up the Centroid AC-DC servo drives with uh, Fanuc uh, 20S and 30S AC servos. Uh, this is part of a project that I'm helping a local company with on uh, getting converted over to Centroid Oak uh, and uh, the Centroid AC-DC drives. Um, You'll be following the Oak installation manual. Uh, this, uh, ins this installation happens to be a very large Betts vertical lathe, um, driving some pretty large uh, Fanuc AC servos. It'll apply to the Centroid AC-DC drives, and uh, it uh, specifically applies to the Centroid uh, AC servos, and uh, more specifically to a number of Fanuc AC servos, uh, the black top, yellow top, and red top uh, AC servos. Here's a picture of the servos that I'm working on. Okay, um, things to have handy. The oak installation guide. Technical bulletin 277. Yeah, there is a wizard, AC-DC setup wizard, and it's explained in technical bulletin 277. Uh, I will try and go over that. Uh, you, uh, it helps you configure the motors that you're working on and uh, get things preliminarily set up. And then the other uh, document that the Fanuc Centroid CNC Retrofit uh, Installation Guide that steps you through uh, doing the installing encoders on these Fanuc motors and then to uh, align the encoder with the uh, motor itself. There's a process that needs to be done. And then once this is done, then you can continue on with the Oak installation guide. All right, so let's get started with uh, getting the wizard installed and uh, configured. Okay, I'm gonna go handheld because I wanna show you the drive setup and uh, including power in, the way I have everything. I'm con it's always a great idea. In fact, I say it's mandatory that you bench test everything. Motors on the bench, never do any of this configuration with motors coupled to a machine. And this machine was quite large. It's a very large uh, vertical lathe. Um, so anyway, you do all this stuff on the bench. So oak is on the bench, the drives are on the bench, and the motors are over here. So I just kind of want to go over that. I'm going to go handheld and explain to you how I have things set up. Okay, here you see a back panel. Now this is the back panel for the machine. I'm doing this configuration and setup for these folks using my oak. I'm doing some testing with some DMM DYN4 AC servo drives there. But in any case, I'm using the e-stop contactor. I'm using my oak. I followed the uh, oak. Uh, uh, schematic uh, to wire this. I have my TB1 15 position terminal block. I have my e-stop relay here. The e-stop relay here will will break the 240 volts that you see going around and it goes over these these uh, bridge rectifiers. These are the bridge rectifiers for these uh, Centroid AC-DC 60 drives. Okay, These are three phase bridge rectifiers. You'll see uh, I have AC 240 volts coming in, and then I'm jumping over to the other drive, and then we have DC coming out of each of the uh, rectifier boards, and then they're coming over to each one of the uh, drives. They feed, it's about 330 volts uh, after rectification going to these drives. And then uh, the this is the drive motor cable, that's the drive motor cable, and this is uh, wired uh, uh, correctly toward to the motors. In other words, uh, 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 I have a I have a schematic, a little drawing. I'll show you. Hopefully, you can see that I did this little sketch. This is the motor socket, and this is the cable end. All right, and I had a motor cable. Um, on the uh, AC-DC drive, we have U, V, and W. You can see them down there, U, V, and W. And on the motor, I pinned out the cable. 
So terminal A is a red wire, terminal B is the white wire, and terminal C is the black wire. So A, B, and C. A is red, B is white, and C is black. So if you look over here, here's A, B, and C. I don't know how well you can see that. Here's A, B, and C. Pins on the motor cable and the motors. And then this is the, the motor cable that I have pre-wired is red to A, white to B, and black to C. And then on ACDC, I hooked up the red to U, white to V, and black to W. Red to U, white to V, and black to W. Okay? And then here's the next terminals down. There's our 330 volts DC coming in. VM plus is positive, VM negative is our, our negative. And there's our motor leads. And then here's our braking resistors. Uh, the braking resistors on these is you are using two of them and they are uh, parallel together. Each one of these is 300 watts, uh, 15 ohms. So when they're parallel, you get seven and a half ohms out. So there they are. Uh, connected to the uh, brake terminal. Each drive gets its own brake. All right, let's go over the communication cable. Okay, you'll notice on on Centroid Oak it is currently uh, identified as drive three. You'll see I'm using the drive in expansion header output and this cable is going to in on ACDC. That's the close, the drive closest will have will automatically be assigned to. And then going out, this daisy chaining these cables, here's the out, to the next drive. In, and then is drive number one. This happens to be my Z-axis, drive two is my X-axis. Okay? Alright, so that, that goes over how I have everything going. So when my when my control is on. And normal, the contactor closes and puts 240 volts to the drives. There is logic power. That's this, this little connector here is logic power. And it requires 5 volts, 2 commons, and a 12 volt. It uses a typical uh, PC uh, connector. Then you'll see I've, I've just uh, paralleled the two connectors for each drive here and here. And then these are going to my... Uh, logic power supply. It's the same logic power supply I'm using for Oak in this case. Alright, let's go take a look at the motors. Okay, here are the motors. Now the ACDC manual is going to go over installing the encoders depending on which motor you have. This is the 30S. You'll see Centroid sells this kit. It's the plate, the encoder. They also give you the connector and the MS connector and then you buy the uh, the encoder cable which goes from the motor to the drives okay if you're going to do this I highly recommend you buy these kits from Centroid buy the encoder, buy the mounting plate buy the MS connector and buy the ready-made uh, encoder cable you need these uh, line driver differential encoders 5 volt encoders you'll have to upgrade them. You'll see this the larger one, the 30S, has a different mounting than the 20S does. But otherwise the encoders are both the same. Uh, part of the procedure that needs to be done in these AC drives is the encoder needs to be aligned with the motor and we'll go through that exercise uh, shortly. But I'm not going to go over installing encoders. I've done that on another video on my own, 1DC videos. And the manual does a very good job of, of describing what you need to do. Uh, on these uh, two retrofit encoders to the uh, Fanuc motors, okay? So, and then I, here's the cable I was telling you about. I This is one off the machine and I pinned it out. That's how I got the color code uh, and the and the which color wire goes to what letter pin on the motor. And then temporarily I just I created another cable temporarily so I could get them both running together. So uh, basically use some butt connectors and slightly crimp the butt so it would slide uh, snugly over the uh, pins on the motor. And then I labeled them. So this is D. Here's the key. 
this is D, this is C, the white one's B, and the red one's A, and I just put a little, you can see my little Sharpie mark down there. But anyway, that's how I did it for a setup. Now also the manual tells you to clamp the motors down. So I took this uh, piece of solid pine across the motors, and I used these quick grip clamps to clamp them to this table. So in the, in the case anything goes wrong or the motors start jerking around, they're uh, secure. All right, so that's the uh, setup. Um, so we've configured the drives with the software. Now we're going to go over how to align an encoder in the manual. Encoders, we're not going to go over installing encoders, but we're going to go to go over how to align the encoder next. Okay, um, before we get much further into aligning the encoder, um, we're going to follow the manual, and you'll see that big red stop sign there on that page, and I'm going to go over them with you. It says check for uh, greater than 100 meg ohms between the motor chassis and the motor power terminals. Uh, I'm going to show you this in a minute. This is very important, and you should do this even before you consider uh, doing this upgrade. Uh, you want to check that your motors are sound, uh, there's no leakage from motor powers, basically the coils in the motor to the chassis, or you're going to damage the drive. Um, but uh, And then it says two pre... Do, so we're going to do that first. Um, check for hunt, greater than 100 meg ohms between motor chassis and power terminal. And then perf, to be performed with the motors connected to the drive. Confirm continuity between the drive chassis and the motor chassis. And then on the drive terminals, check for greater than 100 meg ohms between motor shield and power terminals. And uh, check uh, motor voltage wiring for collect correct polarity. I've done that. Uh, I, I went over that sketch and showed you the pinouts. I followed them. Uh, a, B, and C became U, V, and W on the drive. And then uh, I verified that my DC from my bridge rectifiers the polarity, the positive and negative, was correct to the to the drives. Did all that before anything got powered up. So uh, again, that's up, that's up to you to make sure that that's correct. Um, and check that all screws are tightened down properly. Driving a motor with a terminal loosened could result in a terminal block overheating, causing fire. That's true. Whenever you're done with your uh, your control cabinet and your back panel, go through one time and just check that all your screws are tight. Okay, and if you're in, unsure of the condition of a motor, have it inspected by a qualified professional. Again, that can't be overemphasized enough. We want to make sure there's no leakage between the motor chassis and the power terminals, and that's what we're going to do next. Okay, you'll see I have my, mo my uh, meter set to resistance. Uh, do yourself a favor and buy yourself a good digital multimeter, not a cheap Harbor Freight. I didn't say that. And not a cheap meter. Um, your life can depend on it and the accuracy of what you do can depend on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch these probes together and make sure my meter's working all right. And it is. All right, now I'm going to go through my pins. Now you can see it might be a little difficult for you to see, but this pin right here in the corner I have found that that is the chassis ground pin. So this goes through the cable back to ground. So I'll, I'll, I'll try and show you that. I'm going to touch the, the shell of the, of the uh, motor. There you go. So we know that's a ground, So and we know it's good. It's an electrical ground from the pin to the motor. So now we're going to go from this case to each one of these pins. Here's pin A. We've got nothing. Here's pin B. We've got nothing. Here's pin C. We've got nothing, so it's open. Each one of these motor phases to chassis is open. Now you can check the motor by going phase to phase, and you can see that's 0.8, and this one over here. Point 0.9, point 0.9, so that motor's good. Okay, so that's how we tested that. And then it says to be to be performed with the motors connected to the drive, so I'm going to go ahead and connect this motor back up to the drive. It's keyed, so I'll drop that right back in there. And then as I tighten it, I push down gently on the MS connector. 
I guess they call them MS connector because they're military spec connectors. Some uh, trade names, cannon plugs and so forth, okay? So that's back on. Confirm continuity between the drive chassis and the motor chassis. Okay, let me see if I can reach and do that. My lead's not quite long enough, so I'm going to have to move my motor kind of halfway. All right. So, the drive chassis and the motor chassis. There you see it's continuity between the drive chassis and the motor chassis. I have my motor chassis grounded to the single point, one point ground in the uh, on the back panel. And you want to bring all the grounds back to one point in the cabinet. On the drive terminals, check for greater than 100 mega, mega ohms between the motor shield and the power terminals. Okay, let's get over to this, to the drive. Tight spot here. Okay, so now we're going to go from the shield or the ground to each one of the motor terminals. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So that one's, that one's good. Check uh, VM wiring for collect, correct polarity. As I said, I've already done that. With my uh, notepad, I ascertained this is this is the motor. Here's A, B, C, and you'll see here I have I have A, B, C, and I pinned it out. Uh, the red wire in the cable is A, the white wire is B, and the black wire is C. So to the AC/DC drive, I put red on U, I put white on V, and black on W. And of course, uh, green to ground. That go, that the green in that cable gets uh, landed on the uh, the uh, terminal right here. And then check that all screws are tightened down properly. And uh, that's it. So the preliminary the preliminary is done. And again, the first the first part of the manual it goes over. It goes over the encoder installation depending on which Fanuc uh, motor you have and, and so forth. So um, the AC-DC drive, Fanuc uh, retrofits for DC motors, it goes over that as well. So a good part of that, the manual, is uh, going over installing the encoder kits from Centroid. I've already said it, I said it again, buy the kit from Centroid. Do yourself a favor, just buy it, don't try and make it. Uh, don't try and cut corners here. Just uh, buy the kit and buy the, the encoder cables as necessary. Uh, here's a Fiduc motor here. Here's like, like the one that's uh, the one of my motors is this one here. This looks like the other motor here. So again, that's. Uh, the whole half of that manual is just about covering uh, encoders. Next part is software setup and that's what we'll be going over next and we will be reading from this manual as we go through it to ensure that we don't miss anything. Um, whenever I'm setting up a control I use the installation manual. I go through it from front to back just like it's laid out. Centroid took a lot of time to create these manuals for the users. Um, they're great guides and helps you uh, not skip anything.